Good morning, year 13. So, uh, on Friday last week, we had a look at different types of rainfall. We already made a video on convectional rainfall. And one of the slightly harder ones to learn about is uh, orographic or relief rainfall. And the best example, it, I thought, was to show it to you in, in this video to recap what we did. Uh, the main way in which uh, it works is to do with uh, warm air and it's to do with altitude and mountain ranges. Okay? So, in the case of, uh, we'll take the Himalaya mountain range, for instance, okay? You get a, a warm air from the Indian Ocean that blows towards the Himalayas. As they blow towards uh, the Himalayas, uh, the, that warm air gets to the foot of these mount the, the tallest mountains in the world. It can't go through the mountain itself, okay? So it's forced to rise above it, hence the clouds <laughs> at the top of this volcano. Um, note of warning, there is no volcano in the Himalayas. It's just, uh, for, uh, it's just to model... <laughs> what actually happens with altitude. Um, anyway, so as the warm, moist air from the Indian Ocean moves towards the uh, Himalayas, it's forced to rise, okay, because it cannot go through it. As it rises, it's forced to lose temperature. It cools down as it rises, and as it cools down and loses temperature, it starts to condensate into clouds you can see over here, okay? And what eventually happens with these clouds is that once they get saturated, all this rain is going to fall on the, this, this side of the um, of the mountain range. And this is why you get every year uh, the monsoon rains in India and Bangladesh and Pakistan. It's because of the warm air from the, uh, from the ocean rise, is forced to rise over, above the Himalaya. It rains massively as it does so because it, the air cools down, condenses, the rain falls, it leads to the monsoon rainfall. Okay, And then when it goes over the Tibetan plateau, uh, it goes over the plateau and then back down the other side to go where it wanted to go, but it couldn't because it was blocked by the mountain ranges. As the air comes back down on the other side, the air was cold. It lost all its moisture as it was saturated uh, over the uh, Himalayas, hence the snow in the Himalayas, hence the monsoon in, in, in Southeast Asia. And as it comes around the other side, there is no more moisture left. Okay, All the moisture is gone. And as it, because it's reached the top of the mountain, it can go back down, which is where it wanted to be anyway. It's cold air, it's what much, much heavier, and so it sinks back down into the valley. And as it does so, that sinking air is actually dry air because there's no more moisture left in the air. Okay, and as it cool, uh, as it warms back up, it falls. It's cold air that falls because of its weight. It warms back up as it arrives over the land. That warm air is moistureless. There's no moisture left in it. Okay, and it leads to what we call a rain shadow, um, and it's an area of land that is really, really dry because there's no more moisture in this uh, sinking cold air, and therefore, when say warms up, there's no moisture left in it anyway. Okay, that rain shadow uh, often you might see in textbook. It's called the fern effect, and is one of the reasons why behind the Himalayan mountains. Uh, on one side, you've got the monsoon and the Himalaya snowy. On the other side, you get the Gobi Desert, which is really dry, uh, really dry, arid landscape because there's no more moisture in that air. Okay, I hope that kind of goes some way to explain it. But like I said, remember, there is no volcano in the uh, Himalaya Mountains.